time for the No BS Sports Zone Podcast. What's going on everyone? Rob Johnson here for Rob Johnson Media. We are on episode two of the No BS Sports Zone. Today we're going to talk about four topics and then we're going to get into our book it or shut it. Our first topic today is the Washington Redskins name. Here's the thing about the name. The Washington Redskins were formed in July of 1932. 87 years. Uh, they have three Super Bowl championships. And, you know, since that time period, before they were the Boston Braves, then after that became the Washington Redskins. Um, the thing is, is that when you look at the Washington Redskins as a whole and you look at the name, it's been talked about since the 40s. It's been talked about for a long time about changing this name. Uh, in fact, in 1940, the National Congress of um, American Indians created a campaign to eliminate negative stereotypes of Native Americans in the media. Um, quite simply, there are stereotypes of everyone in this country. And, you know, we have become very sensitive about a lot of things. However, the thing is that there's a, there are difference between being sensitive and not respecting people's feelings. And, you know, there have been a lot of, there's been a lot of hurt in this country. There's been a lot of um, situations where people have been slaughtered, taken from their homes, etc. So you have to respect that history because this is a bloodline. It's not just something that just happens. There's a bloodline that is associated with this. There is, is a pain that is associated with these type of things. Uh, and history is bound to repeat itself and nobody wants to see history ever repeated in that sense of uh, just cruelty. So we're trying to make a better world. And I feel like, in a sense, that on one hand, changing the name won't really do anything to, to uh, change the hatred and the bigotry that we see in America. Um, but on the other hand, I do feel like that changing the name will be a positive thing, not only to give respect to the Native American people who, quite frankly, don't get the respect they deserve. I feel in a lot of senses when it comes to their history of being slaughtered and just being overall um, looked down upon. Um, so in that sense, I feel like it would be a good thing. If I had a um, name change for them, I would either go, I would go with the uh, Washington Braves. I think that you could make some really cool uniforms. I think you could do some, just some good stuff with that. So basically, I would go with the Washington Braves. But that's neither here or there. We shall see what's gonna happen with the name as the Washington Redskins try to get back to the DC area and the RFK site. Next topic, we talk about the top 10 NFL coaches. Now, some of you may, some of you may look at me like, man, why are you doing this? Why do you have some of these coaches in these positions? Well, for me, it's about 2020 and where I think teams are gonna be coming to 2020. It's not about the past, not what you did 20 years ago, not many Super Bowls you have. This is just my list about where I think teams will be at in 2020. Number 10, I have Mike Zimmer, the Minnesota Vikings. And number nine, I have Mike Tomlin, the Pittsburgh Steelers. Number eight, I have Mike Vrabel, coach of the Tennessee Titans. Then we have number seven, we have Sean McVay of the Los Angeles Rams. Then we have number six, John Harbaugh, head coach, Baltimore Ravens. Then we have number five, Bill Belichick. Then we have number four, we have Sean Payton of the New Orleans Saints. Then we have number three, we have uh, Pete Carroll of the Seattle Seahawks. Number two, Doug Doug Peterson, very, very underrated coach in my opinion. Does not get the love and respect he deserves with all the injuries and everything he has to deal with every year. Took a backup to the Super Bowl, a backup that has struggled without being in Philly. Keep that in mind, in Nick Foles. Number one is very simple, Andy Reid. He's the best head coach in the National Football League. He has taken the boy wonder, Patrick Mahomes, to new heights. He has taken that offense to new heights. That team overall rallies around Andy Reid, winning his first championship against uh, the San Francisco 49ers in last year's Super Bowl. So that's my list. That's what I have coming into 2020. Things could change as circumstances change. But right now, I have to look at those guys as my top in my list. Now and we move on to our third topic. And this topic is about hockey. We have a young man by the name of Alexi Lafreniere. This young man is 18 years old, projected to be the number one pick in the NHL draft. Now, the interesting thing is, is that 
out of the 24 teams that are going to be in the play-in tournament or whatnot, that team is probably going to be the team that gets him. Probably the team that's eliminating the first round. Not your teams who are not going to be in the tournament, but the teams are going to be in the tournament. So um, it's going to be interesting. I've looked at this young man. I have studied his game. He's smooth. He can assist. Um, don't know about the defense. I think I was listening to some um, commentary other day. They say he wasn't the best defenseman. But we all know in hockey it's all about um, scoring goals. And the question today is will he be the next big thing? My thing is like this. If you can be close to Sid Kidd, to Alex Ovechkin, if you can bring that, um, you know, that, um, that Gretzky-type style into the league, I'm all for it. Hockey is a great sport, one of the better sports in the world, and especially like we're, we talked about before with playoff hockey, um, where I talked about before when I was with um, at the Legacy Maker Sports Network, uh, one um, in and out show with um, Drew Willingham. Make sure you check that out every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. in and out with uh, Rob Johnson, Drew Willingham, a Legacy Maker Sports Network on YouTube and Facebook. However, um, when you look at playoff hockey, some of the best hockey that you can ever watch. When you look at just overall the intensity of hockey and how those guys have to skate, how they have to maneuver, the agility, all that stuff, it is just tremendous. And if you've never been to a live hockey event, you're missing out. And I look at this guy and I look at how smooth he is. And I look at, you know, just last year, I believe it was for the um, Vermosky Oceanic League. Um, he had, and let me get this right, he played 52 games, 35 goals, 77 assists, and 112 points. And like I said, again, he's 18 years old. And when I look at him, when I look at just his overall attitude, I think he brings some flair, brings some spice to the game. Um, what team is he going to? I don't know, but I hope it's a big market. I hope it's a market that can get behind him. And I hope that he can be one of those guys that comes in and just starts scoring just like that. Because uh, the NHL is just one of those great, beautiful games that I hope continues to grow. And hopefully this young man... Um, Alexi can come in and bring that uh, fire and continue to grow just a great game that is so huge in Canada. It's big in America as well, but I want it to hopefully expand to be as huge in America as it is in Canada. Uh, and it's not just for um, Olympic season or playoff season, all season long. Um, so hopefully Alexi can come in and do his thing and we can continue to um, you know, get some great hockey because it is what it is. Hockey's great, and hopefully, hopefully, it will be growing. And I have a great, big time feeling it might be replacing baseball soon as our top three sport. I have a feeling if baseball doesn't get their act together. Uh, number four, the NFL is possibly making fans sign waivers. Let me say this: Do I think it might turn some people away? Yes, but. Here's the thing, man, during this pandemic. You must wear your mask. You must wash your hands, sanitize your hands. Hell, you should have been doing that before. And that's the problem. We don't take the proper steps in this country to do things correctly. And when we don't do things like that, you know what ends up happening? We get pandemics like this. We get uh, infectious diseases. You know, it's bad enough that we have um, labs where things can possibly get out and then people combine the issue by not taking care of themselves, not using hand sanitizer, not washing hands, not uh, coming home and washing clothes, not, not, not practicing good hygiene. It's not a good thing. So I feel like this. If you're the NFL, you have to do this. You have to say, hey, fans, you want to come to the games? you got to sign waivers. Because if you're not going to take your health seriously, then we can't take it seriously either. And, you know, and by saying we can't take it seriously, not saying that they don't want to take it seriously, but we can't take you seriously as coming to the to the um, to the game that you're going to do the right thing. You know, we got to treat you like a child. We have to say we have to hold your hand and say you got to do this, you got to do this, you got to do this. And that's why I think it's 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 fair to sign a waiver because a lot of the fans are going to come and they're going to be very ignorant. Hate to say that you're going to come, you're going to people are going to be spitting, they're going to be doing this, going to be doing that. You need to wear a mask. Everybody coming to any sporting event should be wearing masks. I mean, honestly, I'm surprised people weren't, weren't wearing masks before. Because if you look at how dirty it is out here, and you think about the droplets that come out your mouth and how it can land on somebody else's face, their nose, and it, it's, it's disgusting, man, when you really do 
a lot of hard research. So, you know, this pandemic is going to be around for about a year or so. It's going to be around a while. Um, you know, we had the pandemic of 1918 lasted about a year, two years or whatnot. So you got to take it seriously. If you don't take your health seriously, then um, expect people to start making you sign waivers because they don't want to be responsible for your ignorance. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for Book It or Shut It. All right, everybody, book it or shut it. Number one, too many politics and sports. I book it. Yeah, listen, I feel like in sports, you need to talk about political issues sometimes, but I feel like when your whole hour is devoted to it and not sports, you kind of got to change it up. You know, let the news do the politics, let the sports do the sports. Because, and like I said, it's nothing wrong with talking about it, but fans are desperate for sports. They hear uh, political talk all day. They want sports. Give them more sports, my man. Give them sports. Number two, will Mike Trout sit out? I shut it because, first of all, he needs to start winning. You know, I know he has a lot of home runs. He's Mike Trout. He has the commercials. Mike Trout needs to start winning. And if you got 60 games, you got the Angels, you got that talent, this is your best chance to do something. Win a playoff game, man, please. So I shut it. Uh, number three, there is pressure on the Phillies to make the playoffs. I shut it. Why? I shut it because of the fact that they're the Phillies. There's no pressure on them at all. I mean, Bryce Harper signed his big deal, and you know the guys didn't make the playoffs last year. There's no pressure. And I actually think, from in my opinion, since I don't now Philadelphia may have pressure on, but I don't have any pressure for them to make the playoffs. I'm looking at Washington. I'm looking at Atlanta. I'm looking at even the Mets. But that's the thing. The Phillies always sneak up on you when you have the least amount of expectations. So I'm going to tell you like this. Watch out for the Phillies to do something a little special this year possibly since I don't have any expectations. Whenever I don't have any expectations for the Phillies, they end up going up. So ladies and gentlemen, that was episode two of the No BS Sports Zone by Rob Johnson. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Watch out for episode three on Sunday. Remember, Thursdays at 7 and Sundays at noon. You all have a great day. Thank you.